glad you're all here. How many people here know somebody with Lyme disease? So just about everybody. So it's probably a pretty big epidemic, right? And how many uh, practitioners here uh, actually help treat people with Lyme disease? I know Nettie does. You do too. And uh, typically, what do you what do you do outside of antibiotics? I'm just trying to get a feel for what where you guys are at with that. Like, what do you do? Frequency. Frequency therapy. Do you what the lymph star or what do you? Uh, the pearl. Okay, excellent, excellent. So I'm going to cover that in here because that's a major, a major uh, component. So, anyways, a uh, little history on myself, and I'm, uh, there's going to be a lot of notes that you can take with you, and I'm, I'm, you know, always open to questions outside of here also. So if you have any questions, I, I came upon Lyme disease by by accident because I just happened to be in Connecticut, right outside of Plum Island. So how many people here really know where Lyme disease comes from, or what do they say? Uh, conspiracy ones? Uh, <laughs> well, we know it's not a deer tick from Michigan if they're right. finding it in mainland China. Right. So, so um, exploration of bioweaponry mm -hmm. um, in Lyme, Connecticut, where they brought the German uh, scientists over post-World War II. That's right. To Lyme, Connecticut, and so in the 50s, and it took about two decades to actually be seen in old Lyme. It was actually in Plum Island. So um, right here, if you see that little, there's a pointer here, right? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. So if you see this tiny, this is Long Island. Um, I was right here in this area in Fairfield, Connecticut, in Westport, in Fairfield, in Norwalk. And this little tiny dot right there is a government research lab that they were doing germ warfare. And in the early 70s, all the newspaper clippings that came out and old, see this is Lyme, and then you have old Lyme right here by Old Saybrook. In Lyme, Connecticut, they um, had an outbreak of fever and chills and aches and pains that weren't going away. And children and elderly, but some of the people that actually worked on the island. So they came out with these hazmat suits and they said, you know, this is from um, mosquitoes and, and ticks and fleas and gnats. And everybody fl flipped out because who doesn't get bit by a mosquito? And it was pretty hard to treat. They weren't responsive to antibiotics. So they, um, what they did is they did some more study and they said, well, no, it's just, it's just uh, mosquitoes and, and ticks. And then they came out again and they said, no, it's just ticks. People still flipped out and they were really, it was a, a public outcry. They really wanted to know if it was created on the island. And then they said, no, it was actually came down from one tick from Michigan, one specific uh, deer tick from Michigan, which, the people bought it, but people still get it, they got sick, and um, here we are today, all these years later. What I want to do first off is I want to play a video. Is the, uh, are the speakers hooked up? I have to, I can hook you up, so. It's a three minute video, and it, it's kind of, it, it's really good because it, it's from the uh, FAR clinic, and they really, they really, in, in three minutes, they really describe, and it's a uh, great visual and information so we don't have to. I don't know. Is that it? Better than me. I have no clue. Okay. So which did you plug in? Headphones, speaker out, right? Click speaker out. Say. Oh, you know what? I'm to the internet here. Oh. Yeah, it's Borrelia is a bacteria of the spirochete phylum and is responsible for Lyme disease. And that's... I did that. Darn it. eluding and concealing themselves from the immune system through a series of techniques. 
first, Beryllia are able to alter their own antigens. This is the most difficult for the host fact. body's immune system to recognize and attack them. The process it uses to do this is to modify its own genome. The spirochetes are then able to alter the antigens on its own exterior shell so that a person's immune system can no longer recognize it, and thereby the Borrelia infection remains undetected. Even worse, when the spirochetes release these modified antigens, it can cause the body's defense systems to even attack the body's own healthy cells. Secondly, spirochetes often develop biofilm communities. Biofilms are protein barriers or shells that protect the Borrelia from antibiotics, from the immune system's attack cells, and other of the body's defense mechanisms. They do this in order to fool or evade the body's defenses. These protein biofilm barriers make it very difficult to kill or even treat the infection. While the Borrelia spirochetes are residing within the biofilm, they secrete chemicals which allow them to digest nutrients from the host to ingest and survive, thereby causing even greater damage to the body. And thirdly, due to spirochetes' corkscrew motion and other factors, Borrelia can burrow themselves in tissue and organs throughout the body, including the central nervous system, which may cause a variety of neurological symptoms, the heart causing chest pain, heart palpitations, and Lyme carditis and Borrelia often lodge within the joints, areas which are difficult to access and treat. This can lead to the patients experiencing joint pain, swelling, plus a variety of muscle and joint myalgias. Contact the Bar Clinic for more information about conquering Lyme disease. Call 385-336-7777. So it's pretty scary stuff. So this bacteria actually changes it's, I gotta figure out how to get out of here. So it actually changes its antigens. That's the problem. You know, the body doesn't know what it's really going on. And then the second problem is the biofilms, which, does anybody know how to get rid of biofilms? Yeah, protease, protease, protease. You know, I what would happen is people would come in, and the the diagnosis really, they by their own admission, is 60% accurate if it's a positive. So that means there's a 40% uh, misdiagnosis. You could have it, and still, you know, four out of ten people that are tested negative could still have, you know, Lyme disease because there's no accurate, even a spinal tap, I think now they're saying it's like 70% accurate. And another question is, if it makes it into your spinal fluid, why can't it make it into your saliva? You know, why is it just uh, particular to one specific species of tick? Why isn't it in mosquitoes? And why isn't it, you know, they're, they're now saying it's sexually transmitted. So if it's sexually transmitted, why can't it be transmitted through saliva? And another thing is, why is it in all over? Why is it in Europe? You know, if you go to, if you go to Australia, they'll tell you straight out. They'll say it was created on Plum Island for a generic warfare. It got out of hand in the in the 50s and 60s, and that's why we have it here now. So I have a bunch of newspaper clippings in Connecticut, all the original from Connecticut and all over Europe, where they're they're blaming us for this germ warfare. And it's very similar to malaria, or syphilis, or, um, or uh, West Nile, or a lot of these other spirochetes. The only difference is, is that this one is, when I look at it in a microscope, because I started doing dark field in Connecticut, and they don't allow it anymore, but when I would actually test people's, look do live cell analysis, I would actually see spirochetes sometimes. Not often, but I would see it as it would age, and then I had developed a frequency generator that I had developed for a friend of mine who had uh, brain cancer. Anybody uh, familiar with uh, Royal Rife's work? Yes. Uh, Rife was the one that developed the dark field microscope for the AMA, and he found by uh, attenuating light, he created a light. There was no natural light or no artificial light that could uh, illuminate past uh, 20,000 times. At that time, he developed the first microscope to see past 7,000 times. And what he found is when he uh, attenuated and used an attenuator on the light, the frequencies, 
the embryonic shell of the cancer would explode. Nobody had seen cancer or tuberculosis before. He was the first one to see it, and then he stumbled. He was an engineer, he wasn't a doctor, and he stumbled upon frequencies for every single um, uh, pathogen. And he and the AMA wanted to buy it from him, and he ended up um, having a nervous breakdown, leaving the country, coming back, being killed, uh, accidentally overdosed. Big long story. But um, with the dark field, you can actually see these things in the blood. And legally, I couldn't say, well, you have Lyme disease because you have these spirochetes right here in the blood, or like even the first slide. So you would see a white blood cell. And you'd see all these spirochetes. And they're drilling in both directions. So when I would see somebody with uh, a spirochete, like your dental has a lot, you have a lot of spirochetes in your, in your gums. And they'll go one way and they're slow and they're kind of wide coil. These are more like sewing needles and they go both directions. So what I did is I would turn on the frequency, which you're probably, do you have a dark field too? Do you isolate them? Yeah. So we have one, you know, we have one here if you ever want to use it, you know, come in. If you're ever questioning, it's very rare to see it in the blood, but you will see it if somebody has a sore, or a pus, or, or something like that, and and uh, you get that on a slide. You'll actually, if they have Lyme disease, you, there's a good chance you're going to see it there. It's not in the blood because they like secreting tissues; they like to hide. They don't like to be in the blood. But they're not even like that's a white blood cell there. They're not even intimidated by white blood cells. It's just amazing. And then you add in biofilm, and then you don't have a chance with antibiotics in my opinion. So anyway, so this is the um, the different breeds of ticks, and it's a small little one here that they say is the only one that carries it. The first few slides are going to give you the, the take, the uh, mainstream medical take on Lyme disease. There's many different takes. Uh, coming from Connecticut in 2001, attorney Blumenthal sent out a, um, a letter to all infectious disease doctors, and I'm paraphrasing, but what he said is, I don't care what the truth is, but you all have to get on the same page because I've got a stack of complaints because you can go to 10 different infectious doctors, they have 10 different diagnostic, they'll tell you 10 different uh, treatment plans. Most of them are antibiotics. Uh, most of them would say there is a such thing as chronic, there's no such thing as chronic. Uh, you can cure it within 24 hours, within three weeks, within, you know, my personal opinion, what I find is if you get bit and you notice a rash, which is less than, 30% uh, of uh, Lyme sufferers actually see a rash. But if you do and you catch it or you know you got bit, just go get an antibiotic right away. In my opinion, that's what I would do. I think if you catch it within a few few days, you can probably nip it in the bud. Anything after that, <coughs> once it starts going into stages where it starts getting into the secretion tissue and hiding behind biofilm or if you have metals, this is why different people respond differently. Because some people have a lot of dental, have a lot of metal, heavy metals, a lot of biofilm. People would come into my office, this is Texas by the way, and this is the latest and greatest, and like Suzanne was saying, um, you know, that's what's reported. What's not reported is the person with diverticulitis or, or tachycardia or anxiety that's given a drug for that. And they, they never, they're never either never tested for Lyme or they're tested and they said, well, you only, have, you only have three bands, you don't have it. So when they check, they're checking for antibodies. Well, the antibodies, we already know the antigens are changing. The antibodies aren't the same in everyone. That's why it's not an accurate testing. Um, this actually, see, look, Lyme disease rips across country. You notice something about this, Ed? Something about this newspaper? It's in Europe, and they're talking about it in Europe. They're just saying it's an outbreak here, and if you start going to the doctors in Europe, they just all say the same thing. They all say it was created, it's, a, it's an epidemic, it's worse than AIDS because it's undetectable, misdiagnosed, and really hard to treat. So I won't bore you. If you can look at these, this is the medical take on the uh, three stages of disease, localized rash, uh, dissemination to multiple organs and systems, and then you have the, these different rashes, which less than 30% see. I've seen them. Uh, people have come into my office, what's this? I've got this rash. I'm like, go get an antibiotic like right away. You know, if, if they still have the rash, and the funny thing is, is I've had people come in, they got bit by a spider. They said, I got bit by a spider, and they have that rash. 
And I'm like, you sure it was a spider? Yep, I got bit by a spider, I was moving wood, got bit by a spider, got a bullseye. Do the spiders have Lyme? So then they'll go to the doctor, doctor says, no, you must get bit by a tick. No, I saw the spider. No, it must be a tick, it has to be a tick. <laughs> no, the spider, I saw the spider bite me. And the person will say, well, unless the tick bit me, the spider bit me after the tick, but. <laughs> So these slides, I'm not going to waste a lot of time with them because we want to get home before midnight. But, uh, you know, the Western blot, this is what they go by. It's very confusing. Um, it used to be all you needed was three out of eight, I think. And then they moved it from five out of eight to be a positive, And then they moved it back to four, I don't know. And then there were 16. And the best testing I find, that, or the most accurate, because they test the whole sample, is Igenix out of uh, California. And they're probably, you know, 80% accurate, you know. But I always say if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck. So then I have people that come in for a, for a host of things, but I kind of feel they have Lyme disease, and they'll say, no, I, you know, I, I don't have Lyme, but I didn't test it. Or, you know what, I've had Lyme six times. Probably not. Probably mm -hmm. just never got rid of it. But they'll, uh, they'll come in and if, you know, in your practice, if you're not getting the results for whatever it is, what you're used to seeing, if it's adrenal fatigue or arthritis and you're doing your protocol but you're not getting the results you want and they have other host of symptoms like fatigue or panic, it's probably Lyme. But I'll have people that'll come in with this um, babesiosis virus, which is the co-infection, one of the co-infections, and they'll have tiger stripes, their whole torso, they'll come in and I'll say, well, you know, we know what this is. I'll say, wow, darn it, I, I do have Lyme disease. But, you know, these are things that just, um, and this Lyme disease uh, associate.com, they're pretty good. They have 25, I think, co-infections, 25 uh, Rocky Mountain. There's so many of them, and it's so confusing. But the reason is, is because they mutate. That's the reason why you have all these different diseases. It's really Lyme disease, but it mutates. And that's why it's really hard. And then it hides in the biofilm. And then the antigens, it's like, you know, the antibodies that your body creates changes and it fools and it'll attack itself. So uh, I work with a doctor in New York uh, City. He's really good, um, uh, Dr. Maganaro, and he does IV, some really strange stuff, but it, it works pretty good. But um, he knows that uh, when, they, when they mutate, he, He'll, check, he'll keep checking and keep checking it, and all these different things will come up, all these different viruses will come up, but it's really Lyme disease and it's autoimmune. He'll also do biopsy of nerve endings, because it actually disturbs nerve endings. So that people have paralysis. Yeah. What's that? That sounds painful. Well, no, it's just a little nip. Oh. Like he'll do, an he'll do a little nip in the ankle. It's nothing oh. worse than having a tag removed, or, you know, okay. dermatologists now, they, they take off all these skin tags and these spots. You go in for a visit, they, like, they take 20 off your neck. So this is one little bite, but it actually will show uh, that there's nerve damage from some agent, and if the person has Lyme, they know how bad the nerve damage is, like we saw in the video. So it actually burrows, because it's a neurological disease, it's very hard to diagnose. Because it's a neural, everything's controlled by the nervous system, right? Yes. The doctor in New York does antibiotics. He does. He does both. But what he does is he has a, a biofeedback. He's a medical doctor, and he refers people to me for some of the things that he's not really uh, apt to do in his office. But he does um, DMSO, high ascorbic acid, uh, IgG. Uh, he takes the blood out and he'll actually be injected in, into the buttocks to get your own immune organs going and get everything going. Um, he does uh, different serums. He does chlorine, you know, which is, uh, I don't think it's legal anymore, but he still does it with the DMSO. And it works pretty good, you know, so if somebody comes in to me and they're in a wheelchair, I'm usually, I'll help you, but you've got to go see somebody who's going to do some IV therapy. And even IV therapy, it's different for everyone. You can have somebody come in and say, you know, I've got a sore big toe, and they go for a, a, a and I have Lyme. I got a Lyme test, and I've got full, I got all the bands, full blown Lyme. Have anxiety? No. You got sore anywhere? No, just my big toe. And then you'll have other people. Yeah, I've been checked. I tested once, positive, but I keep getting tests negative, and I did antibiotics, but they're sick. They can't get out of bed. You know, 
I mean, if you go, uh, if you look uh, Time for Lyme, if you go to that website, I don't like going to any of those websites because they scare me, but Time for Lyme and, and the Lyme movie, uh, there's a movie out there that was about 15 years ago, and it's just so sad, you know? I never, I wouldn't have chosen to do this, but my heart is to help people, and people just started coming to me, you know? So I go back once a month, and I have somebody running the equipment when I'm not there, um, just because I feel bad for these people. And there's a few pieces of equipment they can get on their own, but a lot of people don't, they've already, they're at wit's end, they can't afford the 6,000 or the 10,000 for a piece of equipment, and it's not the cure-all. Like I said, we're gonna go over the five uh, different approaches here. What is bourbon virus? What's that? What is bourbon virus? Bourbon virus? Is that one of the co-infections? It's what it's yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, bourbon virus is, um, and it's, I think it's a ammonia, a, a lot of ammonia in the blood that comes and associates. If you go to this website here, the one that I showed you, it's on one of those pages there. The Lyme Associates. The Lyme right? Disease Association. Yeah, though they have every single detail of every single, and the test associated with it. Right there. there. Right yeah, there. that one right yeah. there. Lyme Disease Association org. So these are the co-infections. There's so many. I mean, there's 25. I only put these are the these are the top, the top uh, five or six. You know, but there there are so many. You know, and the thing is, those are co-infections. But I mean, people come in, and if they're if if you're not seeing the results, have them check for Lyme. You can usually see it in the eyes. I mean, I'm really good at detecting people that have Lyme by just um, looking at the way they look. They have a certain look about them. You know. Like they haven't slept in a week, mm -hmm. or or they they've just um, uh, they're in that um, fight or flight mode. It, it it will also mimic somebody who has heavy metals and um, somebody who has a lot of vaccines too. They can have a lot of the same neurological neurological issues, but because it is a, a neurological disease. So this is what I always tell everybody. I say if it walks like a duck and you know, quacks like a duck, it's a duck, I just treat it like a duck. People will come in and say, no, nah, I've been checked, I don't have it. Or they'll, the whole family will come in, yeah, we all have Lyme disease one time or another. I have uh, tachycardia, my, my wife suffers from panic attacks, my son has really bad hips, you know, he's 12 years old, can't walk, you know, he's got rheumatoid arthritis, and you know, and all these diseases uh, that, you know, are from Lyme disease, that's why the medical profession, they'll just keep giving drugs to put out the symptoms. But these are the top ones that you'll, you'll see. I wrote these down because this is what I see. Observationally, this is what I see. People will come in with aches, pains, anxiety, fatigue. I'll ask them how long. They'll say, oh, you know, 10 years. I've had it for about 10 years now. And what are you doing for it? Well, the medicine really doesn't work. Or it works on and off. And then I'll ask, well, do you have uh, digestive issues? Yeah, I get a little bit. I got, you know, some cramps and, and um, I have uh, uh, either, it doesn't even have to be diverticulitis, it can be like I have heartburn, you know, uh, what do you do, I've taken everything, you still get it? Yeah, as soon as I get off the, the Nexium, it comes back, really, okay. Um, do you have thyroid issues? Yes, I do, adrenal issues, yep, swollen joints, sometimes I'll just take a look at them, swollen joints, you know, and emotional issues. You know how many? How you know how much? Uh, I forget what the uh, what the number is, but the, what's the famous one? Xanax, 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 Xanax. All the people that come in, they're on the Xanax. Oh, no, no worry. All the people that uh, that come in with Lyme disease, they're like, yeah, my doctor put me on Xanax first, and then I found out I had Lyme disease later. So Xanax seems to be the drug of choice to help with the uh, the anxiety. You know. And the problem is when you start treating, whether it's your own, um, whether it's your own antibodies or an antibiotic or an antimicrobial herb or whatever, whatever's attacking the spirochete, it creates a neurotoxin which exasperates the symptoms which people don't want to deal with. So the biggest problem is trying to get people to understand this stuff to say, you know, you're going to get worse before you get better. Everybody knows what a Herxheimer reaction is, right? Herxheimer reaction, Dr. Herxheimer. Herx, um, that was actually, he actually defined that for, I think, influenza. 
because when you kill a pathogen, it creates a neurotoxin. But it was it just so happened that the worst herx is the uh, is the lime herx. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. um, and see, I said sore big toe. I put that in there because that sometimes that's all you'll see. You know, they'll just have one. There's no rhyme or reason. They'll get an X-ray. They'll get it looked at. Can't figure out what's wrong. Has a little inflammation, but it's not systemic. It's just in one spot. Could be Lyme. So this is very interesting because almost every Lyme patient that I see has some form of digestive issues. So whenever somebody comes in and they've got ulcerated colitis or anything, I always ask that they've been checked for Lyme. And nine times out of ten, they'll they'll go get checked. And for some reason, when it's in the intestine, I think it's Dickie that said if you take the you have to take the blood from the intestine to check for. Um, what did you say you need to do that for? Do you remember? I know that uh, Tiana knows. But do, uh, do you know Amy? What was the question? Uh, Dr. Fuller said that um, to be have an accurate reading, you got to take the blood directly from the intestine. Yes. Was for what now? For, for I, blood type. For blood type. Yeah, like eating for your blood type. It's not accurate. Oh, eating yeah. for your blood type. Okay. And I think IgG too, or something yeah. like that. But if you look here, these are the cells on the mucosal lining, right? Everybody knows mucosal lining how important it is. Look at that. Right there. There it is. There's one. I think that's our another one in here too. But the spirochete, because it's a neurological disease, and you don't have smooth muscle contraction, and all the layers in the mucosal, and then you get on the antibiotics to treat the Lyme, or antibiotics for whatever reason, that's just a breeding ground for them, you know? And then I already talked about this. If it's found in the spinal fluid and it's sexually transmitted, what about the saliva? This picture is um, Martin uh, Fried. Is, he's really... Uh, he does all the uh, tissue biopsies. So if you go and you Google him, you'll find a lot of different tissue biopsies. He's actually coming out and saying that, you know, dementia, increase in dementia is, is all Lyme. You know, he's like nine times out of 10, he's finding spirochetes. So, I mean, it's in your spinal fluid and you don't have, um, you know, it, it, there's no lymphatic flow in the brain. So it's really hard. The thing about Lyme is they love connective tissue. They love secreting tissues. That's why they get into the adrenals. That's why they get into the thyroid. That's why they like ligaments. Ligaments are secretors. There's no, no veins and arteries in those tissues other than the secretion. Some of them anyway. So this is the five things that I have found through observation are the five things. I call it, it as a practitioner, you're gonna be a, 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 a safe cracker. You really got to, uh, it's a combination. You got to have it in the right order. Somebody might need more antimicrobials than they need lymphatic support, or they might need uh, more adrenal. If you don't repair the adrenals, it doesn't matter what you do with antimicrobials, or if you don't get rid of the biofilms or the metals. So as practitioners, this is where we have to come in and we have to do an interview, we have to do a little research, we have to do uh, tangible testing, like uh, Nettie, you do the, um, the mineral hair testing, right? Mm -hmm. And you do that too, the mineral hair testing. So those are things you want to check first because the biofilms and the metal, the thing about Lyme spirochete is it's one of the few spirochetes that goes into a cystic form like we saw in the video. It hides in the connective tissue and, and antibiotics can't even get to it. Our stuff can't even get to it. So you got so important is to break down the biofilm and get rid of the heavy metals. If somebody comes in with Lyme, right, even if somebody comes in with cancer, I'm like, you gotta get rid of the metals. I killed her clock, right? She's like, get rid of the metals, get rid of the metals. Because it's just an armoring, uh, they hide behind it, like armor. And lymphatics and adrenal support. So the antimicrobials, I mean, and here's the thing, you know, I mean, you wish there was just one thing, somebody could just take echinacea root and it'd be fine, or a cat's claw. <laughs> As practitioners, it's hard for me because um, you got to figure out what works with what person, and not there's no cookie cutter approach. That's why a lot of practitioners don't even deal with it. That's why medical doctors don't. They'll be like, "All right, get on the antibiotic. All right, we're going to do a little rocephin. We're going to do some doxy. We're gonna, okay, now we're going to do an, uh, IV. 
on and off, on and off, okay, you're not getting better, it's all emotional, you have some Zantac, uh, some um, Xanax. Xanax, you know? So I see that all the time, you know? Uh, but there's definitely, each person will respond to all of these things if we do them in the right order and make it functioning so that we don't kill them in the process because the Herx reaction, you'll lose most people. If you just start uh, giving them something like, one of the things that I found that uh, was really interesting, I was working with, uh, does anybody know Nutramedics? They have a whole Dr. Cowden. He, uh, he must have gotten, is he a, uh, um, yeah, okay, so he reached out to me and he wanted to friend me on, on uh, LinkedIn. And probably because of this, he probably got the notice for this. But I used to work with him in Horowitz because they had this eight time a day, eight tincture, four capsule, uh, $800 a month program. And they, I was buying some of their stuff. And they said, why don't you buy the whole program? Why don't you get people? I said, because I'm getting better results doing frequency therapy, infrared sauna, and uh, lymphatic therapies, and just a few of your herbs. And they said, interesting. And I said, and I'm infusing the frequencies, making my own homeopathics with my frequency machine, in with your herbs. And I'm giving it to people. So we shared a lot of information back and forth through the uh, developing and research uh, person, I forget her name. But they started, so they cut it down to four or five times a day with half the money. But they started using the homeopathics in with the, the herbs. So it's very interesting that they, you know, that they would do that. Um, but everyone will respond somewhat. You just have to make sure that you balance out the detoxification of the lymphatics. These are the things that I love to use. Um, I mean, I was using transformation back in, I want to say 2001, and um, I didn't know why it worked. I was just using it because I saw people were really responding well to it. And they had the program where Brian uh, Sangster had brought in the, we had the cholesterol tag, we had all that stuff, but I closed my lab at that time because uh, Connecticut decided they didn't want anybody running a lab unless you're a medical doctor, and even then it cost you $50,000 to set up a lab, so I closed it. But these are the main things that we use, but there's many, many more. If you uh, want to contact me after, I'll give you a name of everything, but these are just a few. One of the things that I give to see if people react, because people without uh, Lyme spirochete will react, not react to this at all. This is the Venus flytrap serum. And one drop, if somebody has a really bad uh, chronic Lyme, one drop within 20 minutes will give them a splitting headache, most people. And then you say, oh, okay, you know, you probably have Lyme disease. Oh, I have Lyme disease. Walks like a dog, talks like a dog, right? And, but that's really good, but you have to take it really slow, and probably only 20% of the people can do it. It works really well. Uh, I was told because the Venus flytrap has um, you know, it eats flies. So it has a way of breaking down DNA of insects. And they don't really know, there's not enough study on it, but they know that in Africa, it's been, it's almost extinct because the Africans eat it for um, malaria. Because malaria is a spirochete. So they grow it and harvest it, and they actually have to protect it because people come in and rob it. But they make serums of it. Um, the one, the company I used was uh, Energique. They used to make a really good serum. Energique was the, the company I used for that. Uh, Sarsaparilla root, um, olive leaf. I mean, all these things you probably all have heard of before. Why, why sarsaparilla? Um, you know, it's traditionally used for syphilis. Yeah. But, you know, syphilis is a spirochete. Uh -huh. So, you know, but that's, um, in fact, standard process. I think you have a couple of products that have that too, right? But um, they say it's really good for skin. And like standard process, Medi Herb from Australia, they have one product. And here it's called Dermaco. And it has Oregon grape and um, sarsaparilla and something else. But they here they call it Dermaco. It's for the for your skin. In in Australia, they call it microbial defense. Same product, 
here they can't say it works to kill spirochetes, there they can. Garlic, sulfur, uh, glutathione, and all those things. <clears throat> now, if anybody has Lyme disease, you got to get them on this protocol. And the thing is, you have to do it slow because some people will, I like that, I didn't even know that you had this until I started working here. But these are a lot of the things that I used before I started working here. Um, again, prote protease, you could, you could, some people, you might want to even do 25 a day. You know, because you got to break that. It depends on their metals, and then you want to do the heavy metal defense, right? Is that an acute phase? If you were doing twenty-five a day. What's that? Is that a, an acute phase? Or? Uh, no, I mean I, I was doing nineteen for a while. And I don't have one of these. You know, it just gets rid of biofilm. It's just it's just fantastic. You know, I mean even arthritis. Even if you had uh, just a few symptoms. Even if you weren't sure, I would get people on like four or three times a day. You know, any any kind of issue where you want to really break down any kind of biofilm or any kind of, uh, uh, yes? Does the biofilm come from the actual spirochete or it's bio, the bio, bio Everybody has biofilm, but okay. it's it exasperated. It's just the, when you have the spirochete, it's a byproduct of the die-off and the environment and the metals. So everybody has biofilm. Biofilm is like plaque on your teeth. That's a biofilm, you know? It's like the ring in the, on the tub after you take a bath, that, that protein. It's protein. That's what it is. And it, it's, it's um, uh, what do they call it, electrical bonding or electrical folding in biochemistry where the proteins link together and stick together. Biofilm was um, first uh, discovered like in the 1800s or whatever and then and it wasn't until like the 1900s where they actually said this is what it's from, this is what causes it. So number two, so first we've got antimicrobials, and that might mean anything from antibiotics to all the different host of things that they have at transformation or, or any kind of liquid herbs or anything, any, any kind of sulfur, any kind of, some people use um, really successfully the grapefruit seed extract. Um, uh, different, anything that you know is gonna kill it's going to be an antimicrobial, even if it's a fungal antimicrobial, it could work. And usually it's not just one, it's, it's more than one. And then again, so you don't kill the person, you're going to have die off. So the die off is something that you really have to um, detox from. <clears throat> Most people will try to go in like a regular sauna, but because your adrenals are stressed, they can't take the British thermal unit, they can't take that radiant heat, so infrared sauna. Infrared on the lymphatic therapies. You know, uh, Carl, there he is, <coughs> in the 1800s and 1900s, noticed that uh, sufferers receiving any treatment of any, any uh, microbe um, often got worse before they got better. So when you try telling a Lyme sufferer that they're going to go through a healing crisis and they're going to get worse before they get better, they don't want to hear that. You know, you have to just really just hit it home and just say, listen. Uh, in fact, Dr. Cowden says that if the, the worse the hurts, the better the healing. I think that's probably true, but it doesn't have to be true because you really want to balance. I mean, people have to work. I mean, if somebody comes in and they're in a wheelchair, you know, throw everything out. Throw the kitchen sink out and they're not going to feel any worse. Or if they do, they'll feel better before they feel much worse. But a lot of people will do things, you know, because certain, those neurotoxins uh, circulate through the whole body. So, um, you know, I always say it's a good thing, but they don't want to hear that. And um, these are some of the symptoms. I list the symptoms that I see, which is uh, irritated eyes, redness. They'll tell me they see like window screen, like looking through a window screen. or uh, uh, um, It's almost like digital. They'll see like breaking up of digital, but they'll actually see spirochetes in their eyes, and sparkles and things. And Are they actually in the vitreous of the eye? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So uh, ringing of the ears. I've had people come in and they get tinnitus, right? This is a, it's a neurological disease. So you have all these different neurological disorders, and uh, I mean, how do you know whether it's Lyme or not? You know, 
and and the medical profession, or even a lot of us, will just go right after whatever condition we see at hand, and the medical profession will get rid of the symptom. We'll try to look for the root cause, but we're grasping at straws because a lot of times I think the epidemic is much much worse than even we can even fathom. I don't even like get bit by a mosquito. I'm like crazy when I'm out there. I don't want to get bit by anything. No mosquito. No gnat. I'm like, you know, I got a little French bulldog, I lather him with citronella oil. He knows that when he smells it, he's like, oh, we're going for a walk. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way, I rub it all over myself, but I have my own my own um, spray that I use, geranium and things like that. You know, it's massive headaches. What's also. it, massive headaches? Is, yeah, yeah, ocular headaches, massive headaches. That's why if you give somebody the, um, the uh, what's that? The protease. The protease. The protease is like you know the the first thing they'll notice. Wow, you're really helping with my headache. Mm -hmm. You know and they don't care anything else. A lot of Lyme sufferers they don't even want to know because you're so such in this bubble. You're just gonna get them feeling better. Uh, swollen glands. That's one I see a lot. They'll say you know I got a lump here. I feel this here. I don't know why. Have you ever been checked for Lyme? Yeah, I had it for years. I don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, cold extremities, um, but these are all the different, uh, you know, inflammation, gastrointestinal disturbances, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, you know, <laughs> weight gain, weight loss, you know, all of it. Um, so these are the things that I like to use: glutathione. Um, I use a lot of Spanish black radish, which has a lot of sulfur and glutathione in it. Uh, garlic. You know, alpha lopeic acid, uh, berber, panella, those two there are from Dr. Cowden. Uh, vitamin C, buffered, lots of vitamin C, supports the adrenal glands and uh, helps detox the body. Oregon grape, which I already mentioned, olive leaf, grapefruit seed, uh, extract oil, uh, turmeric. And then if you can get everybody eating greens and green vegetables, they're just going to feel better right away. Get them on the, um, the probiotic, get them on uh, 42.5, get them on a really good probiotic, and get them on, you know, have them juicing kale. And they, they'll have to dilute it because it'll actually cause a herx. If somebody has Lyme disease and they juice kale and um, collard greens or cabbage, they'll actually have a herx from it. They'll call you up the next day and say, my God, I felt like I was dying. But the third day, I felt really, really good. <laughs> you know, if they have a thyroid like, we'll do it every reaction, third day. Excuse me. What if they have a thyroid reaction? They are high well, then you have to you have to accommodate for that. <coughs> you, know? you have to. I usually will use something like um, okra, okra uh, uh, pepsin, or something like that. Or uh, there's other things you can use too. But you really got to. I mean, be um, like a, a chlorophyll, liquid chlorophyll. Um, Chlorella, uh, coffee enemas, huge with Lyme sufferers. They'll, they'll get, uh, especially if they're having a really bad Herx, I'll tell them go do uh, colonics. If you can do gravity fed, you know, the uh, gravity nut the machine. And if you could do uh, coffee, follow up with chlorophyll. It's amazing how great they feel. Epsom, Epsom salt, just to Epsom salt bath. You know? Um, there's so many things, but here's the thing, there's no cookie cutter approach, you have to try. This is where as a practitioner you have to be intuitive, you have to kind of ask the questions, you got to look. I do muscle testing, so I will do that, or, or biofeedback, or I try to get some way to determine what's going to work best for them. The Zyto machine, who has a Zyto? Anybody got a Zyto? Zyto machine, great way, it takes a lot of guesswork out. Uh, don't have to worry about you know what they're uh, what they're going to react to or don't. And then here's the thing: they're they're going to look and they're going to come to you and they're going to say, well, I don't like that because I don't think it's work because I feel worse. And then you'll say, it's a healing crisis. Worse is better. It's a good thing. Yeah, but I know. And then you have to determine how they're feeling better. I tell every Lyme sufferer, it's like three steps forward, two steps back. Three steps forward, two steps back. Eventually, you're going to feel better. As long as you feel better. This month than you did last month, we're on the right track. You know, the problem is sometimes people, they, the day that they come in or the day that they call you, they don't feel well. But the, uh, and trace minerals, the, I like the ones that 
you gave me? Mm -hmm. What are the um, um, concentrates from trace minerals? Concentrates need to have trace minerals. No matter what, they're just going to feel. Yeah, there they are, right there. I put my favorite just because you gave me that bottle, and I noticed the difference right away. pH is very, very important. So the biofilm number three, heavy metals. I put those two together because the um, the detoxing is almost the same. You know, protease, protease, protease. Here's a picture, Nettie, of biofilm. Wow. Looks like duct tape. Wow. You know? And what happens is the bacteria, the microbe, just hides in there. And this is from the video. Remember they were hiding the blob in the video? And then nothing can penetrate that. You gotta get through it. And then if you add a little heavy metals in there, you know, forget it. I think this, uh, well, this isn't the one, but they had one biofilm with heavy metals on there. It was just like scary looking. So, um, you know, and see biofilm, protease, protease, and more protease. And this doctor found that when he added digestive enzymes, protease, and did um, LED and um, uh, not radio frequency, but uh, infrared saw, infrared right on the stomach, that when he would go and do another biopsy, uh, he would find a lot less. So they don't like, you know, infrared is like uh, the, the sun rays, you know, as soon as you put your hand in the sun, you can feel it. So, so Michael, is that like not necessarily sauna, but one of those lights where they're on a stand and you just direct it at you the Yeah, like they use in uh, at, um, uh, acupuncture. Yeah. You ever see the, like the infrared yeah. light, you know, in, the, in that diner where they keep your sandwich hut, yeah. you know, before it comes to you, the, the infrared, uh, <laughs> just lay on the ground, so I'm here for therapy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, I mean, I'm not going to, uh, a lot of you already know this, but these are the metals that you want to look for. So if you do a hair analysis, or you do any kind of tissue analysis, you look for these because if there's any any one of these metals, you're not going to be able to help the person with Lyme. You've got to do um, the heavy metal defense, the heavy, heavy metal detox. I mean, if you know how to do muscle testing, but I would say at least, or if you have a Zyto machine, I would say at least, uh, What's the recommended on that? Like two a day? Is that what the recommendation is on that? I would like double, triple it, and then they have to drink a lot of water and do some juicing to get rid of the metals. And yeah, I mean, if somebody has, I had somebody come in, they had heavy duty uh, mercury and lead in their body. And no matter what I did, I couldn't help them. <clears throat> no matter what, they just got worse and worse. Everything I gave them, they're like, oh, I'm not, I don't like this, it's not working, I feel worse. So I just sent them in for IV uh, chelation. Yeah. If they do the IV chelation, you're going to get rid of it quick, but it's going to strip all the other minerals out of their body. And it's going to really destroy a lot of things in their body. So you really have to give a lot of core minerals and have them juice a after, they, after they're done. You don't want to give the minerals while they're detoxing, because while they're doing the chelation, because <clears throat> the chelation will actually spend its time getting rid of good stuff too, so it's not getting rid of the bad stuff, so they're gonna have to be depleted. They're gonna have to deplete. So usually, um, I work with a doctor in Stanford in Connecticut, and he usually does like um, every third day, and then he does uh, DMSO and something else, and then he does chelation, DMSO, chelation, DMSO, ascorbic acid, ascorbic acid, IV, uh, synthetic vitamins, ascorbic acid, and the person comes in and they're pale and skinny, and not doing very well, and then I load them up with trace minerals. And this is the chelation therapy. You know. big, another one is big aluminum. You know, aluminum is in everything. It's the active, and that's why you, they put an antiperspirant because your body knows better than you. It clams right up. You won't sweat when you put it on your skin because your your dermis says, "Uh uh, it's poison." They put it in uh, Gaviscon and antacid too, because your stomach will stop producing acid, to, so it doesn't want the aluminum. Again, uh, a lot of these things you'll see a repeat. So Oregon gray, burdock, cilantro. Cilantro has um, uh, ten times more vitamin C than an orange, you know. But it's really great detox. Like uh, parsley, cilantro, juice it, eat it, or get a tincture of it. Uh, milk thistle. Here's one, I don't know if anybody knows diatomaceous earth. 
you know, they use it, what, to clean the algae out of pools, and, and it, um, Kills bugs. What's that? Kills the shells of the bugs. Yeah, it kills the external exoskeleton. Yeah, yeah, exoskeleton. So, I mean, I, I put that on my dog because I don't put any chemicals on him, so I powder him with that, and he doesn't get fleas, and if he does, they die in a day. That's how great that stuff works. Um, but it's all, it's great. And then bentonite clay has an adsorption properties rather than an absorption, so things will stick to it. And then these are the vegetables. I usually tell everybody, you know, um, just eat as much of the stuff you can unless you're a thyroid issue, you look out for stuff like that. But beets, beet greens, you know, and uh, radishes contain a lot of sulfur, bok choy. So I just, you know, I'll say, listen, just start eating this way. And then, of course, if you want to do, if you really want to be defined, then you can get them on the, um, the biochemical type, you know, find out if they're a power or estro or testro or whatever and then just to, because your body's not going to have any additional stress from foods they don't like and you can add in whichever uh, vegetables are good for their body type you know <clears throat> lymphatics um, it's no good if you stir up the pond and not you don't have any way to get rid of the water everybody who has lymphatic therapies in their in their practice now anybody there, you know, lymphatic can be a lymphatic, very light lymphatic drainage, can be jumping on a trampoline. Just jumping on a trampoline. You know, interesting thing about lymphatics, one of the first certifications I got was on lymphatics. Our lymphatic system is three times as big as our cardiovascular system. Everywhere we have a vein or artery, we have three lymphatic vessels. It's the reason why if we spill gas on our arm, we don't die. You know, our lymphatic system is, is huge. When we're a child, our lymphatic system, our thymus gland, which is part of our lymphatic system that holds the blueprint for uh, every invader we've ever come in contact with, is twice the size of our heart. So your baby, he has, his heart is covered. Your boy's heart is covered with the thymus gland. And by the time we reach 50, it's the size of a cashew because our body thinks we've already been in touch with everything that's ever going to kill us, so we don't need to hold any more blueprint. That's why children and elderly are more susceptible to uh, disease, uh, invaders, uh, bacteria, because the child's never been exposed to it before and it might overcome before he has a chance to create antibodies and the elderly aren't creating new <coughs> antibodies. So if they get a strange strand of flu, it'll kill them. So, but the lymphatic system is so important. Every 24 hours, every bit of lymphatic fluid travels back to your heart. And it goes every three minutes, every drop of blood travels through your liver and your kidneys. So that process is constantly going on. But if you're not getting rid of your metabolic waste, if you don't have good digestive enzymes, if you're not, if the person isn't pooping, they have to do enemas. And they've got to do some sort of lymphatic therapy. Even if you can get the person to just skip rope or jump in place. Yes? I know with all of the metals, the big thing is before I start actually detoxing, is to get people to be alkaline. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be that's going to be the same thing. They just seem to be really alkaline. That's why it's part of the, the metals. Yeah. And that's why I mentioned the trace minerals. You know, it's not like it, there's really, like, I can't stress it enough, there's no cookie cutter approach, but you have to look at each one of these areas and try to figure out is the person. Um, are their adrenals stressed? Do they have metals? What, what's the most important obstacle that you need to get out of the way? Some people, it's just lymphatics. They're not moving. Their pH is way off. You know, they get sick all the time from other things, let alone the Lyme disease, you know? But there's a lot of easy things people can even do at home. You know, I had one woman, I said, listen, you gotta do infrared sauna. She's like, I, you know, I, don't, I can't afford it. My husband, he doesn't want me to uh, spending any more money it's already cost me money here for you i said well you know they have those lamps like at the mm -hmm. at the diner so i yeah i said yeah you get them at home depot she goes really i'm like yeah they have a clamp on them they're aluminum they're shop at a lamp and then you just get the infrared lights so she decided she was going to get a launch here and get about six of those oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so she set it up in her she set it up in her uh, garage and she would get it and she would and she would set it all up and before her husband got home she'd take it all and she'd hide it because she didn't really he didn't understand you know if you know anybody with Lyme or you know anybody with anything usually the spouse doesn't really understand 
or doesn't want to understand, or because they're not suffering. Unless you got a really good spouse like me, and you understand. No, uh, but um, but he, uh, her husband came home early, so she had her headset on. And she's listening, to YouTube, you know, listening to YouTube. You know, uh, it's a beautiful day, and all of a sudden the garage door opens up, and she's jamming, and she's got the lights on, and he's like, so he took a, he took a picture of her, and he's like. He's like, what is, what have you created in my life? I said, well, I can tell you by her getting that, you saved about three thousand dollars because an infrared. She's very smart. An infrared uh, sauna can cost you about three grand, but that's what she did, and and she was open. Some people won't do that, but they gotta, they gotta do what they gotta do. But lymphatics, very important. She took it very seriously. Uh, Eldrain, 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 very great. Um, comprehensive product that has everything in it that you need. You might need a lot of it, but if you have a Zyto machine or you can douse the person or you can just start off slow with it because um, it does, it's actually, a lot of the stuff is diuretic too, so you just got to balance it out. Um, so how much what's is the in the L drain? Like I would have somebody do two, two droppers in the morning. I would, ha I would have them, uh, depending on like, how their lymphatics are doing, you know. Um, you know, there's hands-on tests to actually palpate the body and see where the tender points are mm -hmm. in between the ribs. If they're really tender and they've got um, a lot of lymphatic congestion, um, the spots, if you look online, you can find it. I didn't want to put it here. I mean, I, I had to draw a line somewhere. But here's some spots right here. It's usually the distal part. The body's broken up into watershed areas. So the body's broken up into puzzle pieces. So like everything from your umbilical line up, from your belly button up, goes under the armpits. Everything from the belly button down goes into the creases of the legs. From there it goes behind the intestine and ends right here. So sometimes you'll have people have soreness here. Left clavicle. Everything dumps to the left side of the heart except for the right arm. Everything else, intestines, uh, both, uh, no, not the right breast, right arm goes into this duct. And one on the left and then you have the right lymphatic and you have the lymphatic duct. This is the main duct, this one's three times big. But if you press there and somebody's like, oh, ooh, that hurts, I would start off with just a little bit. Because as you increase, you know, all that, unlike the cardiovascular system, your lymphatic system doesn't have a heart, a lot of you know that, but um, it's by gravity and by electrical impulse. Do you start skin brushing with people? I do. In fact, I'm going to call. I'm going to name it here. And a very great dry brush is a pool table. The thing you use to clean the pool table. It's a soft bristle brush. And it's shaped almost. It has two on the, both ends. It's wide. In the middle, it's thin. And it's perfect for the legs. And it's long. And you can grab it. And it's better than a back brush. You know, the same woman with the the infrared light. She tied she tied a uh, mop handle on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, where's the pool table brush? It's in the garage with the infrared lights. <laughs> so um, I actually have a couple different units. I use a, a light beam generator, which has infrared in it. I have it in Connecticut. I want to bring it here um, or get another one, but they're expensive, so we'll see. Um, a Lymph Star. Um, what frequency machine do you use again? Um, Pearl. Okay. Uh, resident light. Okay, the resident light. So every you know every uh, lymphatic machine or detoxification has a resonating frequency. Even the uh, diode or the infrared light puts out a frequency. Every uh, all the toxins in the lymph. Like I said earlier, electrical bonding, electrical folding is when the cells stick together an electromagnetic charge. We can hit. Uh, it's like what holds. You know, it's what melts things. So if you put infrared light on butter, it's going to melt but a lot of people can't handle that type of detox that have Lyme disease because the adrenal glands get stressed out by heat. So anybody that has an endocrine or adrenal gland issue can't have heat. They can do 10 minutes of infrared sauna. You can be in a snowsuit and get an infrared sauna and it, it hit, you can feel it right away, even in a snowsuit. You don't even have to undress. It gets to your bones within three minutes. It's in your bones. So if there's any spirochetes in your bone marrow, any spirochetes around, they're going to be affected. But you only you start off with like five minutes because the person's going to 
really detox. And then you're going to want to add in some L-Drain or something to drain the lymphatic system. And maybe even have them do a little skipping rope or, or a little trampoline. You know, swimming is really, really good for lymphatics. Uh, there's the dry brushing, you know, soft bristle brush. These brushes that they put here that they tell you to use and the gloves, the gloves are good. It's very light. What you do is you just, um, I think I had it here. This is, they have really good charts like this that shows you the direction and the way that the body flows into. It's broken into puzzle pieces. So everything behind the leg comes up and around like this. Everything on the inside of the leg comes up here. Calves go straight up. Uh, stomach goes down like this, the line in the middle. Right side, left side of the face. So I'll tell everybody to do their massage like this, you know? And, and they can even do the glands a little bit. Very, very light. If somebody goes to a massage therapist, they need to make sure they only do lymphatic massage because um, if they do, even adjustments, I'm not a big fan of adjustments for people with chronic Lyme because it creates a space for them to go into. So when you get an adjustment, you get that little pop that's um, nitrogen leaving the joint capsule, and then the spider gets like, ooh, they can condo. They get right in there. So they, they'll feel worse before they feel better. Or even a massage, if they're getting a deep tissue massage, it's going to cause them to go into that space. They love scar tissue. And this is the machine that I have right here. And it's very non-invasive, the person just lays down. And usually they fall asleep and they feel really, really good afterwards. And one time I, I had sprained my ankle and I wrapped my ankle with it and I fell asleep. And I, I'll tell you, I did some serious drain. I got up, I, had to, I didn't think I was gonna make it to the bathroom to go, to go pee. And when I did, it was like black coffee. That's how nasty it was. So you can overdo it. You know, like the lady, when I told the lady with the infrared lights and she's like, Where, how do I get, what, an hour, two hours? Some people are excessive compulsive by choice. And then, you know, manual lift drainage is a specific technique that I happen to be uh, trained in too. I just got my license here in Connecticut and uh, Texas, so I'm happy about that. But it's very uh, specific, rhythmic, very slow uh, pumping and sweeping uh, into the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Have about six to six hundred to to sixteen hundred lymph nodes in your body, like little filtering. Um, they have some of them tiny, like the period on paper, some of the size of a lima bean. And um, I was I, one, one thing I learned that was interesting. Everybody's born with the same level of fats, uh, same amount of fat cells. Can you believe that? Everybody has the same amount of fat cells, whether you're 300 pounds or, or 90 pounds soaking wet. You have, you, you're born with a certain amount of fat cells. Some of them swell up like grapes, and some of them are tiny like periods on the paper, but they're the same cells. That amazes me. So these are some of the things that you get that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll recommend if people have the money and are serious uh, about it, or they can go to Home Depot. But these are the ones. These are the ones right here. This is great because it folds up. You know, you just get a chair. It's in there. It has all the LED infrared lights in there. And then this one really gets hot. And this one, you only need to be five minutes in there. But um, depends what you pay for. And you always want to start slow. So some people want to get in there and say, "Oh, I feel good." They'll do 20 minutes and they can't walk the next day. These are two books I recommend. Everybody gets that's gonna uh, deal with frequency therapy. This guy here, Barry Lyons, he actually wanted to discredit Rife. And he found all the transcripts and all the sworn affidavits from the lawyers, the doctors, the AMA, and the patients, how he had cured them of terminal cancer using certain frequencies. So he actually published what a lot of, three of his laboratories burnt down in California the same night. Um, by accident. Yeah, yeah. No. And he was accidentally overdosed in 71 by a changing of the nurse, shift of the nurse. One had given him a shot of morphine, the second one didn't realize the first one gave him a shot of morphine. Uh -huh. Nudge, nudge, blink, blink, and he died. But he had come back because he was starting to do his work again. It was a little more freedom for him to do his work. But he, how I stumbled upon it is I had the machine, um, and then they came out with this book. 
like right around the same time that I was using the machine. I'm like, wow, you know, that's interesting how somebody else figured it out too. But I would actually isolate the Spire key, and there was these people in Arizona that I was working with that were doing um, dark field uh, for Lyme disease, and they'd say, oh, do you use this frequency, use that frequency. So I would bring the person in, uh, try to find a Spire key, nine times out of ten you can't, but if I find it, I turn the light on. I put the light, the bulb, right next to the microscope and you would see the thing go crazy. And then kind of one end of it would bubble like a blister and then it would die. And it would, and it, and that's the die off, right? Um, and the person would say, oh, well, yeah, how do we know the light's doing that? I said, okay, let's, let's take another drop and do it again and don't use the light. And you know, they're playing, there'll be three or four of them just like kicking around. They actually look like kind of cute. But, they're like yeah. playing with each other and you know, and then you turn the light on, it's not going, Psh, they don't like it. And there's plenty of documented evidence of cancer cells dying. But anyway, so these are the two books right here. This line, uh, Lyme disease and red machines. <clears throat> the, uh, there's only, I would say there's probably only uh, two or three machines. The amp coil is the number one, it's about $10,000. And I had a couple, a couple of my clients do it and decided they didn't need to take any more enzymes or anything and they're not doing well. This is part of the, 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 the healing. But frequency therapy is definitely part of, I would have named it the six-fold approach, but it's not very popular, and according to mainstream medicine, it really doesn't do anything. But I've seen it, so if I had a choice, if I had Lyme disease, I would buy, do everything I could to get the amp coil number one. If I couldn't afford that, I would get the um, GB4000. I had mine built, so mine's, you know, the guy who built it isn't around anymore, but um, radio frequency is huge, huge, and not all systems. So if you go online and find one for $2,000, it's a milliamp, it's not really gonna penetrate, it's not gonna be that good. You need something that's really, really strong that has <coughs> a multi-amp and really, really strong, um, you know, penetrating capability. There it is right there. That's the, uh, this is the one I have right here. And this one is connected to a frequency generation. And this one will melt your fillings if you turn it up high enough. It'll rock your, it'll vibrate your, <laughs> your teeth. This one um, will too, but um, this one has a carry. Both of mine have a carry frequency. You want to carry a frequency because the carry frequency actually carries the other frequencies that actually kill the microbes. Every microbe has a uh, mortality rate, oscillation mortality rate. So that's what Rife proved that tuberculosis had a different frequency that it was killed by cancer and different cancers were killed by different frequencies and different microbes. I have one of the, the other one, the new one, microcurrent. Oh, the microcurrent? Yeah, microcurrent is good. This is the GB4000, but the uh, macrocurrents are like, you know, they're, you have to be really careful with them. Uh, that's this one right here, this is the amp coil, and everybody's raving about it. Uh, jury's still out for me as far as uh, they claim you don't need to, I, I went to a woman's house, she's like, I threw all my supplements away, I don't take anything, and all I do is the amp coil. I'm like, well, you eat, don't you? <laughs> yeah, but you need, you need stuff, that's how you heal, you need to heal. So, um, but this amp coil is like really strong, and the thing is it has a voice recognition, it's really cool, it comes with an iPad, and you say the alphabet, and you say a few sentences, and it tells you what they do is they have a database of everybody that has liver disease, their voice puts out this frequency. It is the coolest thing. I was a big skeptic, yeah, very big skeptic I was. So I said, all right, don't do me. I, I know what's wrong with me. And it was spot on, spot on. And I was like, I was really, I'm like, wow, if I had, if I had uh, $10,000, I'd buy one. Um, the thing is, you can't, it's, it, they, they word it so it's a journey and it's a process. It's not a healing device and it can't be used by professionals according to them, but I would get one. So it's amp coil. So the first thing I would get would be the amp coil, second thing would be the GB4000, and if you, if you find anything else is good, but those two are really great. Adrenal support. Last but not least, heart doesn't even beat without the adrenal glands. Adrenal glands are so important, aren't they, Sarah? Yeah. Very, very important. And if you can just, the adrenal glands just, whether you got, uh, whether you have a, a, a cold, stub your toe, or you're pregnant, your adrenal glands put over 200 different chemicals out. 
the most important is cortisol, adrenaline, fight or flight. You know, this is why the anxiety, and guess what? The adrenal glands are secreting tissues, like the thyroid. So what are spirochetes like? Secreting tissues. So um, a lot of people that will come in and they'll, they'll have Addison's disease, or they, they say, I have a, um, a cyst on my adrenal gland, and I even have people that I'll say, listen, I think you have Lyme disease. I've had a few cases that will get open heart surgery, and they'll actually go through this whole gamut and if they come back and they say, wow, you're right, it's my adrenal glands. I mean, I have a cousin, she went through the whole thing. And they wouldn't let her out of the hospital because she was worse. Because the anesthesia and the spirochete, turns out she had Lyme disease and adrenal fatigue. But the adrenals are so important, and you just ask these questions, you know, if they, uh, any kind of endocrine issue, but chronic fatigue, decreased sex drive, trouble sleeping, low blood pressure, mood changes salt cravings, weakness of muscles, it can even be one side weakness, headaches, uh, loss of appetite, weight gain, abdominal pain, pretty much anything. But um, I like doing the Raglan's test. Anybody know what that is? Mm -hmm. Sitting, standing, you know, this is it right here. I put it in the notes because it's very easy, easy, tangible way to do it. I send everybody for lab tests. If they don't pass this, I'll send them out and get the cortisol test. I used uh, my Pastoral Medical Association thing, and this is the test I use. It's uh, an adrenal cortex a stress profile app. You know. And then, you know, and it's very easy. It's done with saliva. They send it out, get back. Um, it'll just tell you cortisol levels. But if, if you go for a blood, they'll do blood usually three times a day and check, check like morning, noon, night, because to check your adrenal glands is like taking a second of your day to see what your week's going to be like. You know, it changes from week to week, day to day, hour to hour, fight or flight, anxiety, fatigue, anxiety, fatigue, you know. But adrenals are so important with Lyme disease. Everyone that has Lyme disease has adrenal stress. And then I do the uh, um, applied kinesiology, so I'll go right over the adrenal gland. I'm going to do it with Sarah. Tell Sarah she needs it. She's a... Uh, She's, she, you know, one thing you'll notice is people that, that talk like this, they'll come in and they'll say, you know, I don't know if I have Lyme disease, but they're really, really hoarse. And, uh, or they'll cough, they'll have, it's like a kennel cough. You bring a dog to the kennel, get stressed out. You can get it from the kennel, dog's stressed out. But they'll have like a very hoarse throat or anything, and they'll, and they'll always give them adrenal support. And usually within like 24 hours, their voice changes. Anybody that has like a dry uh, horse, horse throat, you know, um, uh, Clint Eastwood, adrenal fatigue, you know, <laughs> and then, um, uh, let me see the other one, uh, Rocky, um, so that's all that's that's the one eye, the one eye, probably oh, one eye, oh, right, oh, Eddie? Yes. Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> really? So this is a recap. You know, and you can look at your notes, and if anybody needs any help with anything, like if you have somebody you want help with and you need like a little direction, because I've been doing it a long time, I kind of have a good feel for it, you know, and I know what's, uh, I know what's going on, and, and, um, and I could pretty, pretty much nail it right away, but, you know, if you're, if you're willing to treat Lyme disease, you know, hats off to you because it's not easy, and you get really frustrated, and it's hard keeping people in check and understanding all these different things, you know. So, um, but do the best you can. Look and see which one needs to happen first, how much, and then you have to decide what you're going to use for each condition. You know, you might have a 20 or 30 different things, antimicrobials, which ones are going to work the best. You might want to look at the body, body type, the biochemical typing. You might want to look at dark field. You might want to look at the Zyto machine. I want to do blood work, try to figure it out. But these are all the basics. And we could even get into deep. I could talk for hours just about the antimicrobials and just the studies that are done and the difference between the uh, Augustifolia, the echinacea root, versus the stem and the flower. You know. But hopefully you learned something. And hopefully, yes? After before, I don't know what moment did you do you suggest to use the stem cell for the stem cell? Yes, I yeah, the stem cell I think would be 
you got you know with the Lyme disease, the Lyme disease actually attacks itself or it tricks the body into attacking itself. So I'm not sure with the stem cell at what point you'd want to put it. You'd want to put it in because you do stem cells, right? Probably after you get the metals and the um, it probably would be good after metals and the biofilm after you get rid of that and support the adrenals. I would try it. Yeah, because unfortunately most of the patients that we saw is they come in when they when through a few doctors that they say we can do nothing. Uh, and you try the stem cell? And you do the stem cell and you find good no, results? I'll, we use the stem cell, not the other doctors, but I use it as uh, right now. And I yeah. use it for days, for days and day. And how does that work? Pretty good? Well, no. Good. Well, say, hey. I might have a couple people for you. All right, any questions? I don't know about you, but as I was listening to your presentation, I was thinking about people. Rosemary, if you're watching on Facebook, I was thinking of people that should be tested because of the chronic side of not getting well. Hygenics yes. is the best way. Hygenics. Hygenics. Hygenic lab. How much is that test? Um, I'm not sure. Last time I checked, it was like two something, two hundred and something dollars. I think it might even be more. I think that might have been insurance. I don't know. Any I like questions? Have you heard anything about the Beamer and what does that have any kind of um, effect? The uh, the frequency yeah. the Beamer. I know about it, but I don't. I don't have firsthand experience with it. But Morielle's coming tomorrow, more and she's gonna have it with her. Who is? Mario. Mario. Oh yeah? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. <gasps> I'm supposed to go to Austin, but what time tomorrow? Uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m.? Yeah. She normally brings it with her. I, I'm, she, yeah, she should have it. Well, I'm probably going to stop by at 10 a.m. We'll be here at 9.55. Basically, are you looking in a, in a frequency device for something that has argon-filled lights that carries the original was argon, exon, and helium, right? But my bulb I get is from, uh, I can tell you where I get it, it's Bill Cheb, Cheb's uh, photon tubes, and he'll put it with any gas you want, any, I, get, I like the handheld one, and it has the electrodes that'll connect to any frequency generator that has three amps or more, and it just works great. You can put it on the neck, on that, so you don't even have to put it near people, some people can feel it, it's just so strong. Help me thank Michael for his presentation. Yay. Well, we're going to be around for a little bit, so if you want some one-on-one -on -one time with Michael, I, he loves to collaborate, so practitioners, if you're looking for someone to collaborate, he really does mean it when he says to call him, so definitely yep. do. Yep. Definitely do. Get yeah, this one here as well. Too. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And those of you on Facebook, if you want to reach out to us, um, reach us at more info at tecenzymes.com and we'll make sure you get Michael's contact information.